Uh, hello, again, my fellow SUM members. Uh, I want to start this week by just making a slight correction uh, to the last teaching. Uh, it's been pointed out to me that uh, I think I went too far in uh, the story of creation uh, in speculating on uh, other humans before Adam. Uh, I think I gave a wrong impression, so I want to just slightly correct that. Uh, Genesis 2 is clearly a story of the material origins of the world, uh, and Adam and Eve were clearly a new creation, a new thing altogether. Uh, and, but I want to take, still remember the, the, the point of the, of the story in Genesis is, uh, is a story about who we are and what our relationship with God should be uh, and that we're more than atoms and molecules. Uh, and so with that thought, I want to go forward into this week's teaching. Uh, and I want to uh, go a little bit further into the book of Exodus uh, because it uh, is such a strong theme in Lent. Uh, and I want to uh, take this from uh, a current series of teachings for this Lent that have been released by the American academic uh, Scott Hahn, who has a series called Holy is His Name, uh, and I heartily recommend it. And as a little taster, I've decided to uh, praise one of the teachings uh, because it's so good and uh, because it, it fits so well with what we're trying to do. Uh, and the, the, the series he's calling Holy is His Name, uh, and Dr. Hahn is asking this question, you know, we, we know holiness when we see it uh, and we're called to it, but what is it? What, you know, what can we define it as? So it's a, a search for that. Uh, and in this second lecture, he explores it in, in uh, uh, Exodus. Well, really in the whole five books of the, the Torah uh, and making the point that traditionally we consider these as a whole. Uh, tradition, Jewish tradition is, uh, attributes it to Moses himself, but that's not the point. The point is the whole of the first five books form uh, a unit. Uh, and the word for holiness in Hebrew is kadosh, uh, uh, which signifies separateness, distinctness, and being set apart. And uh, it makes the point that in the book of Genesis, we hear the, the word kadosh appears only once uh, in the creation story. On the seventh day, uh, God, having seen that it was good, uh, creation was very good, he rested and he hallowed the seventh day. He set it apart. It was Kadosh. And this is the only time it appears in Genesis. But we go into Exodus and point out that the word appears 78 times. Um, Han calls it a holiness explosion, um, where uh, it's a significant sudden change. Um, and it starts in chapter three at the burning bush, where Moses is approaching the burning bush and God tells him, uh, you know, this is holy ground, separate. Um, and after that, you know, material objects become truly holy. So there's a holy assembly, a holy abode, a holy Sabbath, a holy nation, a holy place, holy garments, holy offerings, holy gifts, holy vessels, holy oil, holy salt, holy incense, a holy tent, holy furniture, a holy altar, a holy crown, and holy bread. Um, so, and the, the, the theme that's running through all of this is um, sacrificial worship. These are objects that are set apart for God's encounter with his covenant people. Um, and so now worship is, is constrained to a place. Uh, you know, what Jacob could anoint as a stone, gravestone, uh, as a shrine, uh, but now uh, holiness is restricted to Jerusalem. You know, only the sanctuary is holy. And so we see the, the people that are set apart by a covenant, you know, which is originally broken by Adam and Eve. This, this relationship is broken and is gradually restored um, through the patriarchs. Uh, and then in Exodus, Moses goes to Mount Horeb to receive the covenant written in tablets of stone. Uh, and so in this sense, the covenant is, is the real culmination of creation. And he quotes um, a contemporary uh, rabbi, uh, Joshua Berman, who says, um, on one level, creation ended on the Sabbath. On a second level, however, it only truly concluded once the tabernacle was completed. The composite parts of the physical world were completed on the sixth day of creation, but the ultimate purpose of these elements, to be dedicated to the service of God, is only realized once the sanctuary was built to serve as the universal focal point for the service of God. So we have this idea of uh, 
um, holiness is a focal point um, for the worship, the service of God. Um, and the covenant is overwhelmingly concerned with worship, you know, specifying, you know, the details of the temple down to dimensions and, you know, the extravagant materials, gold, wood, incense. And Han says, well, God doesn't need anything. He has he's sufficient uh, unto himself. You know, so why does he act like the most demanding Hollywood A-list star? Uh, and it's not that he needs the best of everything. It's that we need to give him the best of everything and are disinclined to do so. And so the tabernacle keeps Israel focused. So Han likens it to Moses being told not to approach the burning bush. Uh, so God's not offended by sandals. So why does he tell Moses to take them off? It's that making the time and place holy helps Moses experience God, not God experience Moses. So ritual worship makes up for an attention deficit that fallen mankind has for what really matters. Um, and so, you know, the Israelite heirs of Adam, Isaac and Jacob, but they grew distracted. And when Moses returned with the covenant that they were worshiping a golden calf, you know, they adopted Egyptian morals and Egyptian worship. Uh, so the, the commands tell Israel to reserve their best material efforts for God alone. The first fruits and the firstborn are for God. And God's not fussy, but we as humans prefer the gifts to the giver of the gifts. So in Exodus, God reveals his holy, his otherness, so that we can point ourselves towards it. You know, the signs are from the visible to the invisible, from the natural to the supernatural, from the earthly to the heavenly. So holiness is given to us to help help us know God as he really is. Um, and Han calls this the mysterium tremendum et fascinans. So the mystery that's terrible and fascinating. Uh, so God keeps us distant and draws us in. We're frightened yet fascinated. And the upshot of this par paradox is that we hear in chapter 33, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. So the holiness of God uh, becomes the intimacy of God. Uh, and that's very important. And I want to finish this up by drawing it to our, the way we are as a parish and this idea of being a, a parish on a hilltop, of disciples being distinct. Uh, and I want to tie it to this Exodus story in that we are distinct not because we think we are better than the world outside. We're not trying to be distinct so we can be superior. We're trying to be distinct so we can draw people in, so that our good works give glory to God. Um, so I want us in our Lenten observance to try and think of our good works, um, if we're praying or, or giving, giving alms or fasting, uh, to think of these uh, works as pointing us to the, the right relationship with God. Um, and uh, I'll leave that there. <laughs> pass that over to the cells um, and to remember that holiness is uh, keeping something separate so we can become intimate with it. God bless and I hope you have a great cell discussion.